Happy Friday, everyone. Welcome to Ed Talk TV, conversations worth having. I hope you're having a fantastic day, evening, morning, wherever you're at, because I know we have international uh, folks here as well. So shout outs to everyone. It's a Friday. Who is feeling the weekend? This guy is for sure. I'm just making sure I checked to share this broadcast out. Uh, we're going to we're gonna dive into some fun things today. Um, I'm going to go ahead and try to see. We're going to test this. We're going to test right now. I'm going to see if Facebook will let me edit the post. For those who are new, by the way, I use my computer at the same time uh, when I stream. So I'm trying to see if it's going to let me go in and make an edit to this while I'm live. Because I want to be able to uh, tag our guest today, which I'm so excited about. So if you guys are new around here, this is a business and um, this is a business talk show. And uh, we talk about business tech and the user experience. We want you to engage. I say we because it's not just me. It's you guys right there. Yep. You right there in the comments, just like Mindy and Paula. What's happening? Um, Mindy, I'm going to try to see if I can tag you in this post because I'm editing it on the computer while we're live, which is crazy. So I'm going to, there we go. There we go. Yes. I'm going to hit save and let's see what happens. Looks like it's saved. So you're welcome. Erica. Hello. Hello. So when you guys are doing something like this, um, live and it's just you, you don't have, you know, a, a crew or anything. Uh, well, I mean, I have you guys, you're my crew, but when you're on this side, trying to do everything, the, the starting of your broadcast, the title, and then once it gets pushed out, you try to edit the title because you want to tag anybody who's going to be in your broadcast. Why do you want to tag somebody? Tell me, tell me, even if you're watching the replay, don't cheat. Don't look at the answers in the comments. Tell me on the replay as well. Why would you want to tag somebody in the post pretty much as soon as possible? Think about that for a second. Um, on that note, what uh, while you're thinking about that and commenting uh, as well, yes, Erica, we have Mindy coming in today. We'll be talking to her shortly. Um, while you're doing that, I'm actually going to uh, drop into the comments and pop into your resources. I'm just going to say your resources. There you go. So anybody who uh, needs to, you can take a look at that bit.ly link that I just shared. Basically, that's a quick little boom, 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 boom checklist of whatever you want to get from me. I'm, some, I'm trying something new, uh, so you can tell me what you think about that. But I'm testing out a new program for links, and basically it allows you to see, you know, Ed Talk TV, uh, my website, Hey Ed Membership Community, where you can learn more if you want. Um, it has sign up for my email list. I mean, it's basically all on one landing page, if you will. So you're not going to all these different places um, and trying to remember. So something different. Try it out um, because that's what we like to do around here is just try things out. And if you're not familiar with the show, we go live Monday through Friday. That could change at any point in time, but that's that's our deal. That's what we've been doing since the beginning of the year. And um, really, we love to just talk about business and tech and the user experience. And we have guests come on like you'll see today. We'll have a guest come on and um, you can later, not now, after the show, uh, you can go use the resources link there in the comments to go ahead and request to become a guest over at the uh, website for Ed Talk TV. So there's that info. Um, how is your Friday going? You guys doing good? Feeling, feeling a little little ready for the weekend and this rain here in Northern California is not helping whatsoever. It's like, can we just, can we just chill? Not work. Like I just want to chill out because of the weather. So anyway, there is that. Now, before we jump into today's content, which I'm super excited about, uh, tell me how many of you guys have a uh, website and or um, how many of you guys are creating graphics, meaning you're creating flyers that need to be uh, have photos on them and material, marketing material like that? Let us know in the comments, even if you're watching the replay, because I get a lot of replay viewers. And I'm going to show you guys. So yesterday, we had tested something. I don't know if anybody remembers. You can share in the comments. Um, but part of random news today. So by the way, at the beginning, we usually like to get random news in there. It's rainy and cold in Texas. Uh, yeah, the cold out there is supposed to be bad. Um, we have the rain. Thankfully, it's not too cold, but it's a lot of rain here. Um, so for today's random news, we're actually going to keep it on Facebook, the news part, and we're going to show you uh, what, what we're going to talk about, how you can download your data, because I know we've talked about 
the the whole breach thing that we've been experiencing with Facebook. And so I want to explore slash tell you where to go to download your data. Um, it's pretty cool. I literally did it a few minutes before the show started. I'm impressed with what you get. Um, and so even if you don't care, it's still, it's still cool to have your data yourself. So there it is. Um, you use Canva a lot. Nice. Um, okay. Yep. Mindy says, yep. Paula says, yep. Uh, finishing a poster on my job now. Awesome. Uh, that's perfect. And Mindy says, uh, 80 today and frost tomorrow. Oh, that's not good. Uh, so we're going to talk about that. But yesterday, if you were here on yesterday's show, we talked about how I was testing the new resource link that I shared with you guys. I actually put that in the post title and I wanted to test it. Do you guys think it worked? Meaning, do you think that it helped my posts get out there or did it not? You let me know in the comments. I'm gonna, I'm gonna have some iced tea real quick. Let me know. Do you think that the test from yesterday by putting the link in the post title helped the post or did it? Let me know. See some comments coming in. Hey, David. I don't see David popping up on my thing, but hey, David, what's happening? Uh, so yesterday we put that resources link in there in the, the title of the post, not in the comments, but in the title of the post. And if any of you guys are curious, I'm going to show you. I, and I'm going to show you my insights on my page. I don't care. I'm going to show it to you guys. Um, oh, there's David. Hello, David. I'm going to pop you onto the screen. There you go. See, when you show up live, that's what happens. Welcome. Um, excellent. Uh, I'm going to say helps. Perfect. I'm going to say no. Okay. So this is going to blow your mind, you guys. And now let me say, before I show this to you, let me also mention that there could be a ton of different factors going on. Uh, it Yesterday just could have been a bad day on Facebook. I mean, we don't technically, technically know, but hey, Chrissy, um, but by, from what I know and from what I hear people saying on the Facebook interwebs, uh, this, it kind of confirms this. So let me go ahead and share my screen with you. So you guys are going to see, you guys are going to see all of it. So just prepare yourself. Take a look. This was yesterday's episode 68. Look at the reach 105. And then when you look at all my other lives, they're well over 300. This is a photo, you guys, and it's still got over 200 uh, reach. Now, again, I don't care so much about the numbers, but I think this is just interesting and it's definitely worth showing you all of this because of the fact that it shows you that, again, yesterday something could have been, you know, wonky in Facebook land, but the fact that I put a title or the link in the actual post goes to show you that it does limit your reach. And that has been, people have said that, I probably have said that in the past too, um, but you know, you always got to test it and you got to see. And so I wanted to show this to you that that in fact does have an effect on your reach. Again, for me, I'm all about the engagement and you guys do a fantastic job of engaging and sharing out, but this is a teachable moment because you guys are going to want to know this for when you use links with your posts and when you go um, elsewhere, right? You guys are, wow, yeah, exactly. Um, I've always heard Facebook doesn't like links outside. Yeah, um, that's the crazy part. So you guys, you know what's so crazy to me? And I think we talked about this the other day. It's so crazy to me because I get, again, I get why Facebook doesn't want links, right? Because they don't want you leaving their site. Totally makes sense from a business standpoint. I get it. But when you are a social platform and you're encouraging people to connect and share, well, you, they got to they gotta share links. I mean, you got to have links in there sometimes and those links are going to go somewhere. So like I, I know on mobile, most of the time, links will stay within Facebook. So it will just open up a Facebook web browser, which is fine. But like, don't penalize us for using a link. I mean, come on, that's ridiculous. So, you know, I get both sides. And that's why I wanted to show those insights to you guys, because I want you to know that it does 
um, have an effect on your posts. Now, here's an interesting thing, and I haven't I haven't tested this in my inside my community, uh, the Hey Ed community, because we do have part of our our um, community is a Facebook group. But um, I haven't tried it in there yet because I'm not really concerned about it uh, at this point. But I have seen in other Facebook groups people um, saying don't add links anywhere in your uh, group, meaning in your posts or in the comments, because it will um, it will keep your your group low. Now this would be for a public group, okay? So like if you're trying, if you have a public group. And again, I haven't tested this. This is just what I've heard and, and what I've seen out there. But if you have a um, a public group that you are trying to get reach with, that you're trying to have be discovered, um, you may want to be testing this and seeing, you know, when you have links that are shared. And, and it's going to be kind of hard. I don't really know because um, you don't really get insights for the group unless you're at 250 members, I think it is. So, you know, you kind of have to play with it, but um, there are some groups that will say no links at all because it pulls the reach down on them. Uh, for me, for my community, we're a private one, so I, I really don't care about the reach on that because they have access to what they need. So, you know, it's always a testing thing because what works today may not work tomorrow, right? We know that. Facebook's always changing. The algorithm on any platform can always change. So you constantly have to be testing and seeing what happens. And that's why I wanted to share the, the insights here with you guys to show you that it, it really can, at least on my business page, even going live, which is what Facebook wants, even going live, adding a link to the post title is a no-no, at least for my page. Chances are it is for your page, but you can test it out and see. Um, but be aware of that. So make note of that. And, and, you know, like I said, you don't have to be obsessed with the numbers. Um, you know, how many people like your page? How many people follow your page? Because we don't, to be honest, we don't care, right? We care about how many people engaged, like you guys are doing right now, even if you're watching the replay. That's what counts because engagement is what creates the relationships. And relationships over time is what gets you the sale. And that's what you have to worry about is building those relationships. Don't be about the sale today, be about the relationship over time. So that that's really where that comes from. And, and just looking at your insights from here and there, um, look at the different views. There's seven days and then there's usually 28 days. Take a look at those and keep in comparison because sometimes you're gonna look at one or the other and be really depressed because all the things are pointing down and they're all red. Sometimes they're gonna be all green and pointing up and and you just, it's one of those things that don't be obsessed with them, just be aware of them and play around with it and see, okay, well, if I post a photo today, in a couple of days, I'm gonna look at it and see how well that did versus if I just posted text or versus if I just posted the um, the actual uh, Facebook Live. So keep that in mind. Um, now, real quick before we get to our guest, if you wanted to um, download your data from Facebook, you might uh, have seen this. I'm going to go back here. Whoops, I got to be on the right. Got to be on the right program. Um, I'm going to go back here so you can see this. So, if you want to download your data, you can totally Google this or. All you have to do is go to the little arrow at the top of your, it won't see it up here, um, but there's a little drop down arrow towards the top up here when you're logged in. You click on that and you go to your settings and at the bottom right, pretend like this is the bottom of the page, it will say uh, download your Facebook data and then you click on start archive and then it will email you once your data is ready and it will send it to you and then you log in, you click on the link, you log in, and then from there, you'll actually be able to download what's called a zip file and then that will be a package of like everything. I mean, I like I said, I downloaded it right before this and I only clicked on a few things. It literally has like all of my videos, my messages, my audio files for the messages. I, I'm like, this could be really interesting um, uh, if you see where I'm going with audio messages and having those access to those. Um, not in a weird, creepy way, but in a repurposing way. Um, so there, there's things like that that you will want to still look at, even if you don't care about your data on Facebook, 
you should still download this every so often so that you can then have that information just in case you need it for something and just in case you need to reflect. And it's it's a little cleaner. Like I said, I've only clicked on a couple things, but like if I clicked on my, my feed, uh, it actually shows like all of my stuff. I don't have to go through and like try to figure out on my profile like where I'm clicking it. It's all that stuff. So anyway, there is that stuff. Woo! Are we ready for our guest today? Because I think I am. So I'm gonna go ahead and give our guest a call here while you guys are hanging tight in the comments. I'm gonna go ahead and give her a call here and pop on to here. We'll see how it works. Yes, we got audio, I can hear you. Almost can see you maybe. Can you see me yet? <laughs> no, not yet, but I got audio, which is good. <laughs> Okay. And Let me for see if I can Yeah, no worries. There we go. There we go. Yay! <laughs> we got audio Yay. and video. <laughs> awesome. So go ahead and introduce yourself to everyone just so that way they know who you are and then we'll we'll jump into it. Okay. I'm Mindy Stevens and I'm with Mindy Stevens Creative, but on Facebook it's Wise Eyes Creative because Facebook won't let me change my page name. <laughs> <laughs> Nice. And and you guys will make sure that uh, Mindy has her info in the comments afterwards. So don't worry, you'll be able to connect with her and um, and go through from there. Uh, so yes. what what are we going to learn today? Because this is a big one um, that I think a lot of us really, even if we don't really know too much about it, we need to know about it. <laughs> exactly. Um, well, the main thing is don't use images that aren't yours, that you don't have rights to. That's a biggie. Yeah. Um, because if you just go search for something on Google Images and download it and use it on your Facebook, you could actually be using a copyrighted image that will get you a fine, like a big dollar fine. And that's a big one, you guys. Uh, a lot of us, and, and it's okay if you've done this. I mean, it's not okay, but it's okay that you, <laughs> you've done this because you didn't know. But you have to realize that when you're coming up with, um, when you're trying to create content and, and you want to have photos, you really need to be careful of where you get these photos from and you can't just do a Google search and then pull from it. Like, the, the, it's really hard. Now, Mindy, is there, is there an option for people to still do the Google search part and pull photos from there feeling a little safer or is that pretty much not the recommendation? I would probably not do a Google search. Um, there are several stock photo sites that photographers upload images for free. And I actually have a resource file as my freebie, yes. um, one of my freebies where you can, it's like my top 10 that um, they're good. You know, um, some of them are the ones that Canva uses, but then there's like several more that, that aren't on Canva. Which is nice. And for those who don't know, um, what is Canva? What would you use Canva for? Well, Canva is a very sophisticated graphics design program that is easy to use, but it still has a lot of tools that if you're not familiar with, you can't find them. Right. So um, <laughs> that's one thing that I like to help people do is figure out how to use Canva more efficiently. Nice. Um, because I know as a graphic designer using Photoshop and Illustrator and InDesign, um, for years, I loved Canva because it was all simple. Yeah. Um, but even I learn something every day, especially when I'm teaching others and they ask a question and I go figure out where it's at. And I'm like, oh, I didn't even know it could do that. So right. it's just, it's very powerful tool to make your own graphics for social media, um, for print, just about anything really. Yeah. They, I mean, they really have almost everything you can think of. I mean, they even have magazine covers you guys and, and magazine layouts and it's so cool to be able to go through and like just just browse to get inspired i like that part i like really just yes. to go through and like browse everything because it gets my creative juices flowing for graphics and marketing materials yes exactly i do the same thing because it's a lot easier to come up with an idea when you're not coming up with it from scratch so exactly, exactly. And so what do you find with, um, with the images 
what do you find with most people, what they are doing? Um, are they just doing the Google search or do you think that they're, their intent is that they're going to find these things, but they're just not paying attention to the rights or, cause I know that that always, especially for blogging, that's, that's a big issue. Whoops. There we go. Yeah. I think a lot of people, <laughs> I think a lot of people just don't know, you know, if it doesn't have somebody's watermark on it, they just don't know that they can't use it. Um, I know when I used to have my full-time job, we would have customers, you know, send us stuff off of Google Images and expect us to use it or low resolution off the web, you know, logos from a business that, you know, they didn't have, you know, the rights to use it. And that's another a big no, no. You don't use a logo or a trademark without their permission too, um, especially on blogging, um, unless it's an affiliate link or something like that. But. That's good to know. So um, you guys, if you don't know affiliate links, Basically, that's when you are attached kind of to a company where you can get some kind of payment, whether it's cash or discounts or freebies or whatever. Um, basically, you're, you're promoting their content, their, their products, and they're giving you a little kickback. Um, but you always want to make sure that you mention you're an affiliate for them. <laughs> right, right. And that's hard to do because I don't think you used to have to do that um, yeah. when you did but I think that's a new thing. But yeah, I, I know that I, as a designer, have gone out to the web because we didn't get logos for something, you know, sponsors or things like that. And I've had to go out and find them that way. And it's hard to find a high resolution image um, to use, especially for print. Yeah. But if you, you know, if you don't know that that business is a sponsor, you know, it's just somebody who says, oh, I want to use this logo, um, then you have to be really careful because for one thing, it could be some somebody uh, designer threw it up on a website and it wasn't to spec. It wasn't their brand. You just have to be, you know, really cognizant that you're putting the right image out for everybody. Yeah. Putting yourself. <laughs> yeah, no. And that's true. And when, um, oh, are most of your clients like bloggers or small business owners or does it kind of vary from everyone? Yeah, it's a, it's a varying, um, right now, most of my clients are small business owners that, or direct sales that need to make their own graphics and they just don't know where to start. Yeah. They've just been using their company's graphics, um, which is great when you're getting started, but you really want to put your face and your brand on your images so that people know that it's you and that you're not sending them just to another consultant, you know, right. especially if you try to reuse another consultant's graphics, you have to be very careful <laughs> with that. Yeah. I will say to you guys, um, cause I know how hard it is, especially starting out. Um, when you're creating your website and you're like, I don't have any good pictures of myself. I don't, I look terrible. I'm not into this. I like, I I've been there before too. I get it. I understand, you know, um, the photos that you see of me, I actually took those up myself. Like I just threw on some lights and used my iPhone. That's all I did. And had, it, had my, mm -hmm. um, had my tripod, my handy, that's actually downstairs, my handy, uh, selfie stick tripod. You guys like, that's all I did to take my photos and they're decent and they work. Um, but prior to that, I had thought, okay, well, I really, I wasn't comfortable with putting my face all over my website. I was like, I don't, it feels weird. It feels like, yeah, it feels like I'm being cocky and it's like, oh, well, this is the edge show. Like, come on down. <laughs> and it just, it felt weird at first. So, uh, I don't know if anybody watching, even if you're watching the replay, if that, that's, if you can relate, but that's how I felt at the beginning. I, I definitely felt like that too. It wasn't until I went on a business retreat in January and there were eight, eight of us there. Um, and two of us, me and another lady had good cameras and we, we all decided, I did that taking our, our, our branding photos at the retreat would be a good use of our time. And so her and I um, split everybody up and took photos. And from then on, you know, it's just been a lot easier um, to have something that I can use. Um, because, yeah, it's, sometimes if you just have a selfie, it's really hard. But yeah. just grab a friend and go do a photo shoot. Use natural light. Then you don't have to worry about your lighting or anything. And just, you know take a couple hours and take turns. And, and you bring up a great, a uh, couple great points there. So yes, if you guys, 
if it's if you're just like you're not going to conferences and stuff you're just at home or whatever then yeah try to get a friend if you have an assistant or whoever to just hang out with you for even just 30 minutes to an hour literally the photos that I took you guys of myself it was literally uh, an hour's worth of my time that I set everything up because I was supposed to go actually that day I was getting ready to go meet with a friend who was going to take the photos with my camera because I was just going to have them just, you know, set everything up and just make sure I was in the shot. Um, Right. But they had to cancel at the last minute. And I was like, well, I'm already ready to go. I might as well just make it happen. And, you know, I just turned on a light. Um, I have a lighting kit from um, just a studio light kit. So I just put one on and I just plopped the the uh, tripod and then I put a mirror behind so I could see kind of the positioning. So it's a little awkward, you know, because you're like this and that. <laughs> but it, it's an hour worth of your time to get a few shots and you just change your shirt, you know, or outfit right. a little bit just to have a variation. But um, I will say that the smart thing I like that you mentioned is going out to conferences or events when you're around others and splitting it up and being like, Hey, we're all right here. Let's make some time and just do this because most of the time at conferences and stuff, you're going to be, you're going to find some fancy part of the hotel or the event center where you can just hang out for a few minutes. Right. Right. We were at a beautiful Airbnb. And so we took the whole afternoon to take photos. So it was, it was really nice. So Um, smart. Yes. Yes, it was a great idea. It wasn't my idea. I can't take credit for yeah. it. <laughs> <laughs> no, but it's so smart, yeah. though, because when when we go to events, I don't think that we automatically would register that. Like, it, it's more, we got to make this event. We got to go meet the people. We got to network. And, and everything gets so crazy. And then you, at the end of the day, you're just like, you're burnt out. You're like, I'm done. Where's the room service? Like, <laughs> I'm done. And then you just keep doing it until you have to go back home. So... You guys take advantage if you do have to travel somewhere, take advantage of that time and see about, um, you know, getting some cool photos of yourself for that. Yes. And also another thing, um, when you are at an event or, or if you're doing videos, make sure you do a, a bunch of them at one time. Yeah. It's like, well, you got your hair done, your makeup or whatever, if you're a lady, you know, Put on your nice clothes and get some good photos. And especially if you're like if you're at a conference or something and there's a like a a big party where you have to like wear an evening gown or something like that. Definitely get some photos while you're dressed up. <laughs> yeah, exactly. No, and it's true. And then you guys think about this. This is a fun. This is, is a really fun exercise to do. Um, and you're going into the weekend, so I mean, I'm not saying it's homework, but. You know, you can make note and and you can tag us later once you do this. But what would be cool is um, you have some fun with this and just and just play. And I will say um, what's neat about it is after you do it and you actually use the photos, some of them, um, what it's cool is that you get to tell the story that you took the photo or that you had your friend. Like it becomes this yeah. story that you can share with others to create engagement, right? Right. Or even if you have kids, like my son, he's five, but he loves taking pictures. And he's really taking some good pictures as long as he's not too right. far below you and shooting up the nose or something. That's <laughs> another tip. You know, make sure the camera is level or above you. Yes, um, big but one. He, <laughs> he loves taking the pictures. So if I had it set up on a tripod and I, you know, set up the shot, he could push the button, yep. you know. So even your kids could help you take your pictures. Yeah, and that's that's the cool thing too. And uh, you guys, uh, some of the, you might have already uh, a selfie stick with a remote. Uh, the one I have comes with a remote. And what's cool is you, if you can just set up and kind of see where you're at, you just got that remote, and you just you just start, hey, you just start snapping, <laughs> you know, and just just have that. I will mention when you go that route, take a look at the pictures every so often because what I end up doing is, and if I'm just doing this so I can be sideways, um, is I'll have the remote show a little bit, which you don't really want, right? So, so you kind of have to like take a few photos, take a look, kind of analyze it a little bit, 
Don't be too hard on yourself. You know, just take a look and see, okay, where am I standing? How's the lighting? Um, you know, it, if you're, if you're um, wearing a short sleeve or no, um, I don't know, strap or something, make sure that there's no tags and that it's not falling off. I mean, you know, there's all these little things that you don't really notice at the beginning, like hair ties. You guys, I do photography on the side a little bit. So it's like all these little things that you may not catch the first time, you want to make sure that you kind of practice looking at the photos in between because you don't want to do all that work and then realize at the end you, you forgot you had your hair tie on here and now it's in every photo and you can't really use that photo on your website, you know? Right. Or you get somebody to edit it out. Like I did that for about half the ladies. I've edited the photos for them. Like, to, like for instance, there was beautiful wall, um, paneled walls in this house, but they had the white um, outlet covers. Oh, I was like, Oh my God. So I, I went in and deleted all those. They were just so distracting. Yeah. Just simple things like that. Yeah. And really, or crop things out when you're done. You can always crop in your iPhone. Yeah. And a uh, great point on distractions. So you guys, um, going back to, uh, when Mindy had mentioned natural light and, and being outside, um, right now you're seeing actually natural light. Um, and then the, the webcam I use, I use actually does have a really good, like in, it's, it's just built in, but it's a natural like enhanced light. So it picks up low light, I guess, or whatever. Um, so between the two, it's really nice. But, um, what I'm getting at is you want to make sure that you don't have, if you're outside, look to see where you're at. Cause you'll, you might do some tree photos cause of the, the lighting and everything, but try not to have a, a branch or a pole coming right out of your head. Yeah. <laughs> Cause, cause those are hard to Photoshop and, and yes. it, it's, it's a pain. And we don't think about that at the time. Cause we're like, Oh, I got the right spot. Like this is good. And you take the photos and then you're like, Oh, uh, what am I? The tree lady? I got a branch right. coming out. Exactly. Every, like every senior photo that you ever see, there's always <laughs> by the tree or, you know, right in front of the tree. And it's like this tree growing out of their head. Look, yeah, I know. <laughs> yep. Yep. We had a trash can show up in the kitchen in several of the photos and it was not able to be cropped out. Uh, like it was this humongous bin of trash. <laughs> so. And that's the, that's the, um, that's the hard part for it is like you're, um, you're having that, those things. Cause the thing is you guys, at least the way I look at it is I like to try to have as much natural and clean as possible the time of shooting so that literally all I have to do is do slight enhancements of the light just yes. to have, um, have that help there. Um, because it's one of those things that I, I don't like to sit there and be in Photoshop and I don't want to be, <laughs> I don't want to be like fixing all these things. Cause that, that takes more time. <laughs> right. Exactly. Or money. If you have somebody else do it. <laughs> it yes, Exactly. Um, I'm just putting in the, the comments here. Uh, uh, you guys, there's a link there for filming uh, gear that I have, just so you can see a few people are asking about the, the webcam and lighting. But um, yes, Erica says, uh, one of our wedding photos has a palm tree coming out of her husband's head. Um, <laughs> yep. We have others. a fountain coming out of ours. <laughs> see, there you go. Now we it's just... like, oh, it'll be pretty in front of this pond with the fountain. And it's like coming right out of our head. <laughs> <laughs> and, and that's the thing, you know, and they'll, they'll be those photos. Um, but you know, you guys, you just want to make sure that when you go through and you take these photos, pause after a few shots, you know, check your makeup, check your hair, check your outfits, change if you need to. Um, but also take a look at the photos and see what's going on and, and paying attention. Um, and Mickey brought up a, a point earlier too, about video you know, um, you guys will see at the beginning of the show and part of the, the promo video, I have uh, a little part where I'm at a conference and, and I'm talking. Well, I also have that on my website. And how I did that was going back to what Minnie was mentioning about the um, conference taking photos is I knew I was going to be speaking at this conference. And thankfully, I was able to get someone to hold my camera. I had everything set up. I went on Facebook Live. I, I brought you guys with me, and I was like, "Listen, we're here. I'm nervous, but you guys are here with me. We're good, and we're just gonna do this." And so then I was able to have this uh, guy just hold my camera, and he did an awesome job. He's a photographer, so I mean, he did an awesome job. But <laughs> he, literally, he just he was panning the room. 
while I was speaking, he got some of the audience and he got me speaking. So it's, it's awesome because you guys got to see it live, but I also got to save the video so that I can repurpose it and use it on my website. See how, yes. how that works? Yeah, that's great. And one thing I did after that whole day of shooting all the pictures with the good camera, then I was just like, I don't know whether I was just exhausted, but I like didn't take any like cameo shots while we were doing our training or anything. But luckily some of the other ladies did and I was able to, you know, get tagged in those. But I was like, Oh my gosh, it was just like, I just totally focused on what I was doing and didn't take any pictures. (laughs) So remember to take pictures wherever you are and whatever you're doing, because you, you'll want to look back on that for one thing and then also to use it in your social media. Yeah, it's so true. And when you said uh, the good camera, I don't know if anybody else was thinking this, but I was like, <laughs> Becky with the good hair? I don't know. That just that just came up. when you The way you said it, I was like, oh, it's like Becky with the good hair. Um, <laughs> uh, no, you. it was an, a, my good camera is a Nikon, but I usually use my iPhone because it takes really good pictures too. Yeah. And, and that's okay. So that's a good point. Let, let's talk about that for a second because you guys watching, even replay viewers, you're going to be thinking, okay, what camera do I need to buy? What camera did she use? All of this stuff. And what camera do we really need, Mindy? Your iPhone yeah. or whatever phone you have. <laughs> yep. it, it's as true. long as it's not a flip phone from the you know early 2000s, you're probably good. <laughs> yeah. And, and that's really, you guys, I, I have this, I don't have a Nikon. I have a Canon, but I have a, you know, an SLR camera. So it's a big camera and, and it's expensive. And I use that when I do weddings because, well, actually, I use both. I use my phone and the camera, but I will say that because you guys, if I showed up, if you hired me to be your wedding photographer and I showed up with just my phone, I know (laughs) I'm going to get good footage, but you're going to judge me because you're going to be like, I'm paying you to use your phone, right? Right. That like you guys are going to judge me no matter how much you like me. You're still going to judge me on that until after you see the footage. So I have to bring the big camera because of the looks and it does get good <laughs> photos. Um, but what's crazy is, and it has good video too, but what's crazy is when I used the video for the first time, because it was a newer camera, it doesn't have the built-in image stabilization that my phone does. So the video looked, and I didn't have my, 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 um, my little steady cam device thing. So I just was hand-holding. You guys, the video looked, it looked cool. It worked for what we needed. Um, but it looks like one of the old school home movies because of the shakiness and stuff. And I was just like, I I wouldn't have thought of that because I, I shoot video all day long on my phone and I never have issues, but it's because it's built into the technology there. Right. And mine comes with, it was one of the first Nikons in the consumer range that had video but I only used it like once the video was very sharp and it had the image stabilization, but you could hear the sound of the yeah. focusing. Yeah. Cause I didn't have a mic set up or anything. I was like, Oh, I bet if I had a mic attached to it, I could get it far enough away that it wouldn't do that. But it was super annoying. Cause I was wanting to use it for like, you know, videoing myself, right. Doing things for business. And I was like, this isn't going to work, but I think I could use a mic and it would work. Yeah. And and so that's the thing, you know, because you guys, we all always have that that first question that comes up when we start talking about, you know, photography or film live broadcasting or uh, podcasts or whatever. It always comes up. What equipment should I get? What mic do I need to use? Really, you just go with what you have right now, especially if you're getting started. Look at I Mm -hmm. look at what headphones we have right now. We have our Apple earbuds with the mic. And mine's That's even it. the old one. It's not even the, it's the round one. Oh yeah. I can't yeah. find my new ones. <laughs> <laughs> See, and, and that's the thing you guys, like you just go with what you have and, and make it work. And if you don't have the budget to go hire a photographer, then you just get your phone, you get a little tripod and you just run with it. You know, you'll see in the, the comments there, that little tripod that I have with the remote, it's like, you're all in one. It was like 20 bucks. Done deal. Yeah. Like, or you can get a you can get a full size one for twenty dollars. I think yeah. it wouldn't have the little attachment. Then you right. got to buy that separate, probably. Yeah. So you know you just have to look around and just see. But don't. 
I just don't want you, especially starting out, I don't want you to run out there and go spend a ton of money on equipment that, not saying it's not going to work, I'm sure it's going to be great and it's going to be awesome, but it may not be the right time for you right now to do that because you could use that money There's elsewhere. a learning curve yeah. too when you buy, because I took a course on how to use my camera and I still learn something every time I use it, yeah. but you know how to use your phone. So right. use it. <laughs> and that's a great point. The learning curve, because it, it's true. The, the stuff that I can do on the, um, Canon, there's like so, and it, I never took a photography class because it didn't work with my schedule when I was in school. So everything I learned was, was through a photojournalism class and just researching. And so I can do it. It's just, there's so many cool things on that thing, but I'd have to sit down, sit down and take time or have someone teach me. And I don't need it that much when I, when I know how to use this technology. Right. I love that. And so, okay. So we've kind of talked about, um, what not to do. And we kind of talked about how we can start doing it ourselves, but let's say we're just, we're just so not ready to take photos of ourselves. We are just not camera ready. (laughs) What, what kind of options do we have now based off of that? Well, if you um, if you use Canva.com, you know that they have several free images that you can use. Like you can just um, ha- have like a picture of somebody at a computer or, yeah. you know, something really basic like that. But you definitely want to brand that photo because if you use a photo, there is probably at least 100 other people using that same photo. And, yeah. you know, you don't want it to be. That's one reason I kind of steer clear from the Canva images unless I add a filter to them or do something to them to make them look a little different. Right. Um, but they're, you know, like I said, there's 10 that I use a lot. My top three, top three are like Unsplash, Pexels, that's P-E-X-E-L-S dot com and um, oh gosh, there's another one. But Unsplash and Pexels are really good. Pixabay, that's the other one. Oh. Those three um, are really good they have like new images all the time and they're high resolution nice. plenty big enough to use on your blog on your website um on your social media and this just put your stamp on it somehow yeah. add your web address add your facebook page url something on there and don't make it super obvious like because you're afraid somebody's going to steal it because right. they, they might <laughs> um but you know put it on there so if somebody else uses your image because it, it could happen. It does happen all the time. But then it, it'll it come back to you. Yeah. You know, people will see where it actually came from. And if they didn't share it legit, you know, if they just downloaded it and reused it, um, they'll have your information on there. Yeah. And that that's a good point because a lot of people uh, are worried about re- people stealing their photos and trying to figure out, like, what they can do to help protect those photos. Yeah, it's hard because I know um, a consultant, a direct sales consultant, I think she was with Norwex at the time. Someone actually used her social media images that had her face on it. Oh, (laughs) jeez. Yeah, yeah. And that's that's the crazy part. You know, I will say I remember I went to someone's website. Nobody, none of you guys, it wasn't you, but don't worry. This was a while back. Um, But I went to somebody's website and... I'm reading their page. And again, you guys, growing pains, right? I, we're all at different levels. So I'm not judging if, if this is your type of website, um, but this is informing you. I went to somebody's website and they, it sounded great. Like they had their, they had a picture of who I thought they were. Um, and then it went to their bio. And then they had another picture that was completely different of who they were. Meaning the one up here at the top was not them. The one down here was, and they were two completely different looking people. Like you knew that there was stock photo and then them. And, and because it was their website and they, their story and everything, that first image is the one that I attached with them. And so it, and it's hard because you would have to see the way it was laid out. Cause you might be thinking, Oh, well I kind of have that on my site, Ed. It, 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 just make sure that you look over your stuff and kind of understand that you want to make sure that people don't think one thing, then they realize it's a completely different story as they scroll down your page, if that makes any sense. 
Yes, it actually brought up a memory for me of a place I used to work. And I won't mention any names, but um, on the website, they had put in stock photos of some people that were... They weren't employees of the company, but on the, oh, you know, no. the employee page, oh, no. they had two guys that worked for an outside source yeah. for tech support, right? And they just used a stock photo and put their names in there. Oh. Their real names, but stock photos because they weren't really employees. They were more like contract kind of thing, I sure. guess. But they put them in, and I didn't do it. So yeah. one of the other designers um, was made to do it, put them in one of the company shirts. It, on the stock photo. And that's the thing, you guys, like, if all else fails, I'd rather see a really bad selfie of you than to see a stock photo I saw in the stock photo inventory or on somebody else's yes. website who's really, exactly. who's really Tim. Like, I know who Tim is, and, and Tim's not that same person that's on your site. Like, <laughs> it's just weird. Yes, and if, if a stock photo looks familiar... Like if even if it's something, it's like one of your customers you're trying to portray. Yeah. If that customer looks familiar to you, that stock photo looks familiar to you. Don't use it because you've probably seen it on an ad. That's a good point. In your newspaper, in a magazine, on Facebook, wherever. Because there's this one girl that has long brunette hair that I see everywhere, <laughs> and I've you know, and when you're using certain stock photo sites, yeah, there's just not a lot of options for right. you know certain ethnicities or whatever and that person gets used over and over and over again so just sure. be careful if if they look familiar i wouldn't use them no that's a great point <laughs> that i i want to stick to for a second because that is really good uh because i think i do that you know in my head i already know that but i don't know if i if i've ever said that before to people where it's like the familiar part so it's a good one to know because when i'm searching for photos you guys i i i try to be I mean, I, I guess I have a more of an urban look anyway or feel uh, for the most part. But I try to see through the photos to see how much of the story it's telling and how it ties into the story I want to portray, if that makes any sense. And so what I do is I know what I'm looking for, kind of, and then I go browse and then I see what the photos are, but I try to find something that people probably aren't choosing and or I'm looking at things that don't I don't recognize. Like I, it doesn't feel like it's plastered all over the internet. At least not right. from what I'm looking at. <laughs> right, and you may not even realize it, like you said, right. that that's what you're doing. But it, like I can see this one girl in my head because we had to use her for so many ads where I worked because <laughs> we only had one stock photo. Um, site that we had a subscription to and when you have a subscription you use that subscription <laughs> yeah that's true and a lot of um do you feel like there's more subscription based uh stock photography now or is it more like a free-for-all um i think there are a lot of stock um photo subscription sites more now and more that's one other thing I needed to mention about those free stock photo sites. Yeah. Be very careful because they have ads at the top for those paid photo sites. So if you're looking for something, it will show you examples sometimes at the very top yeah. or over on the side um, for Shutterstock or iStock photos or some of the other big ones. Yep. And if you're not careful, you'll think that that's a free one. But just gotcha. be careful and make sure you're you're clicking on the ones that are in Unsplash or Pexels or whichever one you choose. Yeah, no, that's a good point because I, I have seen that happen. Uh, I feel like I've seen that happen a lot more lately that you're starting to get more paid options at the top of your search before you get to the free, which, I mean, as a business, we can, we can all relate like right. smart. I mean, you want it above the right. fold so people see it. So, yeah, it makes sense. Um, on that, Mickey says, I try to use good amount of diversity in stock photos I use and scroll way down, hoping photos aren't overused on the web. That's a good tip. Mm -hmm. Definitely. Um, yeah, you guys, when you're, when you're scrolling through searches, even just like on Google too, just not even, I'm not even talking about like images, but search in general. Um, when you're trying to be a little different, going through and digging a little bit more, 
will help that. Like, I don't know if you've ever noticed on Amazon, but sometimes when you search for things on Amazon, if you are willing to go in several pages, you can find some good, good deals on some things that you not may not have even thought of um, because they're not so popular, like at the top. Yes, and also if you broaden your search... So you're not so specific on what you're looking for. Because if they didn't tag that photo exactly with That's those true. words that you're using, and some of them are foreign. Yeah. So if you use a word that is not a foreign compatible word, then it won't show up. So if you just look for something like, for example, you might look for um, multi-generational smiling family. <laughs> well, that may not, you may find a few, yeah. but a lot of them are probably going to be the paid ones. Right. Um, but if you put in smiling family yeah. or happy family or something like that, or happy group, yep. you know, you just have to try and get more and more and more general if you're not finding what you're looking for. And you may take a lot of scrolling, but yeah. no, but that's worth it. Yeah, exactly. That's a good point is to not be so specific, which if you guys know and remember, we talk about that in general, right? When we're, when we're working in our business and trying to work on things, like we want to know and be specific about what we're doing, but we also want to branch out and see what's going on around us because that's what's going to help us grow and stand out more because we know what's happening here and here. We can't really see, but out there. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. Um, Mickey says, Mindy knows everything. It's true. <laughs> No, not quite. He's just, he just picked the right topic for me. Yeah. <laughs> That's awesome. Um, so any other last tips before I let you go? I know you have a freebie that you'll pop into the comments for us, um, yes. for people. Um, anything else that you wanted to share before I let you go? Well, I also, if you're new to Canva or even if you just would like a refresher on Canva, I have a Canva challenge coming up, a uh, great graphics challenge coming up on the 16th. It's a free five-day challenge. Nice. And um, you get videos to your inbox and then, it, you know, you can play along every day and show your progress. And then at the end of the challenge, I give away a seat in my workshop to, to one lucky person who has Ooh. finished every day of the challenge. So. Nice. I'll be popping that in the comments too. <laughs> yeah. See, where's Whitney at? Whitney, somebody better tag Whitney because there's homework, but that's fun homework. I'm liking that. <laughs> that is cool. Cool. I am excited about that. Um, yes. That it is... went really well the first time I did it, so I'm glad to do it again. Oh, cool. Oh, good. See, and so I don't even know, but you, it sounds like you tested it and it worked. Yes. And you actually yes. like it, so you're going to do it again. Exactly. And I had really good feedback. Everybody learned something. And, you know, I learned things just trying to, every time I try to explain things to people, I end up learning something in the end because I try to make it sim more simple. Um, so that's why I just, I think it's so fun to, to see the light bulbs go off in people because I get them too every day. Oh, I, I know exactly that feeling. I love seeing that. you guys, you guys right here, you all do that to me every day. It's like, like I said, it's like Christmas morning all day long. It's nuts. <laughs> uh, awesome. Well, thank you so much, Mindy. Uh, everyone else hang tight, but Mindy, definitely uh, pop into the comments when you can and share those links with us. And yes. thank you so much for being on the show. All right. Thanks, everyone. Take Bye. care. Bye. All right, guys. How awesome was that? Like, that's what we're talking about. So that's the kind of stuff that I mean when you want to become a guest on the show the, the resource link is there. Um, it will take you to edtalktv.com. But uh, that, that's what I'm talking about. Like you just, you be, come on and share your knowledge and, and show everyone what, what you do and what they can learn from you. And we have some, we have some awesome guests coming up uh, just like Mindy um, in the next few weeks, been booking some really, really cool topics. So it's going to be, it's going to be a party. Um, but that, that's what I want you to do and to really continue to Engage with each other. So even if you're watching the replay, engage and say hello to somebody new because you, you don't know who you're going to meet and, and what connections are going to happen. That's why we say the magic happens in the comments. So you want to make sure to do that. Um, if you need anything, you know where to find it uh, right here on the page. And I'm going to go ahead and leave you guys with this on a Friday. And so have a fantastic weekend. And thank you guys so much for showing up, delivering, and engaging. Take care.